Okay, cool, perfect. So I'm Darwin. Um, um, I'm, I'm working at Netflix. I was at Columbia earlier. So um, today I'm going to talk about our paper, which is uh, factorization meets item bedding, um, regularizing matrix factorization with item co-occurrence, or we would prefer the unofficial title, which is a simple trick to boost the performance of your recommendation system by without using additional, da additional data. And this work was done while I was at Columbia with uh, 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 my colleagues, Yao Altonsar, uh, Laurent Charling, and David Bly. OK, so a little bit of motivation. Um, so in recommender system, user item interaction data is normally encoded um, as a user by item matrix in the form of user item preference triplets. Um, so here's a typical example of uh, such a matrix with three toy user and three items, and uh, we express the preference in the term of sum up. And the matrix factorization method is, as we all know, is a standard method to infer the user latent preference from such data. However, matrix factorization is actually only one form of modeling assumption. Alternatively, we can also model the item co-occurrence patterns across users. So, for example, if we consider a bunch of users who like to listen to metal music, it would be very reasonable for us to see a lot of co-occurrence of different metal music in their listening history. To make analogy to the NLP community, which is where we draw most of the inspiration of this work, the analogy would be equivalently to model a set of documents slash users as a bag of co-occurring words slash items. So, for example, if we are giving, if we if we have a bunch of art, uh, documents and we see um, the word Pluto and uh, planets co-occur a lot, then it's very reasonable to assume those documents are probably about astronomy. So, the question we try to answer in this paper is: Can we combine these two views in a single model? And since you know we have a paper here, you probably know the answer is yes. So. Here, I'm trying to get to it, how, how we do it. So basically, uh, in order to combine those two views, uh, we would like to have the recipe for both. So I'll start with the matrix factorization. It's pretty standard. I'm pretty sure you are very familiar with, so I'm mostly just laying down some notations. So we have this um, user item matrix, which we call click matrix. We use Y to denote. And uh, we basically factorize it into the product of two lower rank matrices. The user latent factor, we use theta, and the item latent factor, we use beta. To make it formally, this is basically the objective for, you know, like the widely used weighted matrix factorization method. Um, and yeah, so basically it, uh, formula, it factorizes the click matrix into the product of theta u and beta i. Pretty standard. Um, so on the other hand, we also want to have the recipe for modeling item co-occurrence. So I will actually make a little bit digression to talk about word embedding, and you will see the connection in a minute. So you probably all heard about the skip gram word to back model, which is kind of a buzzword a few years ago. So it, what it does is basically it tries to learn a low dimensional word embedding or word representation in a continuous space. And the, the model is trained such that when giving the current word, it tries to predict the words surrounding it, which they call the context words. However, there is really no stopping us from, in, from applying this model to domains other than word. So equivalently, we can embed item sequences in the same fashion, and we can just call it item embedding. And so you might wonder, how can this be connected with item co-occurrence? That's a good question. So as they show, Levy and Goldberg show in a paper earlier that the skip, skip gram word back model is actually implicitly factorizing some variation of this so-called point-wise mutual information matrix. So here is the, this PIM matrix, how it's calculated. It seems a little bit abstract, but uh, the high-level idea is this is basically the co-occurrence matrix. And uh, to go back to our um, um, NLP example earlier, under this formulation, the PMI between, say, Pluto and planet will be probably much larger than the PMI between Pluto and, say, Rexus, giving a reasonable corpus. OK, so now we have the recipe for both the factorization and the uh, item co-occurrence. 
we propose this model we call cofactor. And uh, the one sentence summary is really what we are doing here is trying to jointly factorize both the click matrix and the item co occurrence PIM matrix with a shared latent item representation slash embedding. So, to put this into math, this is the objective for the cofactor model. As we can see, it consists of two parts. So, the first part is our same old friend matrix factorization. And the second part is the item bedding where we factorizing the PIM matrix. So here M is the PIM matrix. And uh, we are doing this jointly factorization by forcing both parts using a shared item representation beta. So what this does effectively, as you can probably see, is that this item representation will have to account for both user item interaction as well as item atom co occurrence, and they need to find a nice balance between both. Alternatively, we can also view this objective as regularizing our traditional matrix factorization objective with the item embedding learned from this co occurrence pattern. So, uh, I haven't really specified how we define, like, say, co occurrence or context. So as you could possibly imagine, this is actually very problem and application specific, but at least in the paper, we choose to just define the context as the entire user click history. So in that case, the core occurrence path, the core occurrence cons, I, the, this IJ, is effectively basically the number of users who click on both item I and item J. And in fact, the reason we chose this context is that we will not require any additional information beyond the standard matrix factorization model, so we can actually just compare with, make a fair comparison with the regular matrix factorization model. However, at, this, is, th this is very problem specific. You can certainly define your context as session or as really anything as you want. Okay, so um, we conduct a couple empirical study on three different data sets. So we have the data set of archive where user click on scientific papers, and we also have the movie land data set, which we turned into an implicit data set by only keeping the rating of four or higher. And also we have this taste profile data set where we have the user listening history for, some, for a lot of music. And uh, we basically split the data such that the training set and the test set do not overlap in time if we have the time information. And we compute some standard metrics uh, record different level, NDCG at different level, well, NDCG at 100, and the mean average precision at 100. And uh, yeah, so the results, so we, we compare with the regular weighted matrix factorization. As we can see earlier, our objective is really just one more regularization term on top of matrix weighted matrix factorization. So by making this comparison, you can really um, attributes improvement to this additional item core occurrence regularization. And as we can see, we get consistently better performance across metrics and across data sets. And some of the improvements is actually reason reasonably large. So we, we simply just get the better results by reusing the data twice in different ways. And what's even more interesting is that since we're just reusing the data, this item core occurrence pattern is in principle actually available to the matrix factorization model. It's just that as a very limited bilinear matrix factorization model, it has just that much modeling capacity. So it cannot uncover this structure by itself. So you can kind of consider the cofactor model is a, a way of feature engineering where we re-encode the data in a different way and fit the model, and then model can learn better. And to further demonstrate, like, when the cofactor does better or worse. So here is actually a breakdown of NDCG on one of our data sets uh, according to user activity. So it's a little bit hard to see. So, but basically, the access, uh, X -axis is uh, listed by user activity from low to high. So basically, and also the blue bars is cofactor and the red bar is with matrix factorization. So as we can see, um, the cofactor model helps more when the user activity is very low, which makes sense because, you know, traditional collaborative filtering model always struggles when you only have limited amount of data, 
while on the other hand, cofactor model can make use of additional signal from the atom core occurrence. And we observe basically similar patterns across other data sets as well. So here I'm only showing one, but we can see more in our paper. To even give you more intuition of why cofactor is better, we also take a look at this user. So basically this is a subset of a user in the Movieland data set. And as we can see, he has watched some of very popular movie and uh, some of the kind of niche French movies. So here, the number in the parentheses is the number of users who have watched this movie in the data set. So basically, bigger number means this is a popular movie in this data set. And smaller number means this is a relatively unheard of movie in the data set. And uh, here's the top recommendation given by the cofactor model. So as we can see, it does pretty well at finding both all other popular movies as well as some other niche French movie, as we can see here. Well, on the other hand, the top recommendation by weighted matrix factorization is pretty much dominated by popular movies. And uh, well, it also successfully finds a French movie, but it's considerably more popular. So this makes sense because, as we can imagine, those niche French movies tends to co-occur a lot, and this signal will be picked up by the cofactor model, but not by the weighted matrix factorization. And the last question we want to ask is actually how important is the joint learning part? Since one contribution of the cofactor model is that we actually have this single unified objective where we have both factorization and embedding. So we want to find out how important is the joint learning. So to, so to prove this concept, we basically train a separate model where we f firstly fit a word to vec model on the user item consumption sequence, and then we use the learned item embedding and uh, keep it fixed in a matrix factorization model, uh, which, got, which, which is what we got in the last column, which is this word to class rec. And as we can see, it does not do as well as cofactor. It, not, it does not even do as well as the raw with a matrix factorization model, which kind of makes sense because you would imagine the item embedding learned from word to vec is definitely, definitely not well suited for recommendation as the factor you learn from, say, weighted matrix factorization or cofactor. Well, on the other hand, cofactor, even though formulated in equivalent fashion by the joint learning, it's able to find a good balance between both matrix factorization and item embedding. Okay, so that's pretty much the model. I would just like to point out a few really, like, um, direct extension that we can go from here. So the first one is kind of silly, but it's actually so natural that now that we find that adding item, item co-occurrence pattern helps, so what about adding user, user co-occurrence pattern? Um, we would be very excited to find out. And uh, another interesting direction to go would be to take a look at higher order, order co-occurrence pattern. Finally, this regularization is really straightforward to add. So it's actually very interesting to see we can add the same type of item-item co-occurrence regularization to some other collaborative filtering model. For example, we can add the similar term to the Bayesian personalized ranking or to factorization machine or to some other, uh, or to Slim and the many other models you would like to try. It, it's actually very simple. Okay, so in conclusion, we propose this cofactor model. What it does is it jointly factorize both the user item click matrix and the item item co-occurrence matrix. And this is really inspired by the recent success of the word embedding, or more specifically, skipgram word work. And we also e explore the result both qualitatively and quantitatively and uh, try to demonstrate when it works better and when it doesn't and try to figure out why. And uh, finally, the source code to reproduce all the experimental results are all available online, so feel free to play with it, and uh, let me know if you have any questions, and thank you. Okay, time for some questions. One over there in the back. So one of the applications that comes up a lot in recommendation systems is uh, sometimes oh, sorry, you have to... I'm here. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, can, you can probably stand up, so he'll yeah. see you better. <laughs> so 
one of the applications is recommending substitute items or complementary items, right? So Amazon does that too. I was thinking, because you already have the co-occurrence matrix, can you use this method to develop two different recommendations, one for substitute products and one for complementary? Um, oh, that, that's actually a very good question. So I haven't thought about that, but now, now I'm thinking about it. This is actually a perfect case where we can leverage this information in the co-occurrence pattern. And uh, I would say, if in that case, you probably actually want to give higher weights to the part where you factorize in your co-occurrence matrix. Because basically, as you can see now, we have two parts. As you would imagine, there is one hyperparameter in our model, which is really the balance between the matrix factorization and co-occurrence. And in your case, if you actually want to inf like enforce more on the substitute and complementary, maybe you will want to give higher weights on the, in like the item embedding part of the matrix. But yeah, I, I think that's actually a very interesting direction. Any other question? So I, I have a couple of questions for you. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, you uh, addressed a little bit of this uh, in that comparison that you did by doing the word to back embedding uh, in a different stage and then the uh, matrix factorization. But uh, as you were presenting, I was wondering, what if you use any other kind of ensemble method, right? You could think about combining these two different approaches instead on joint co-learning, um, doing some form of uh, um, either boosting or bagging and joining the two recommendations. Have you thought about, is there anything else, is there anything more that it's adding this than just using the right appropriate uh, ensemble method? Um, that's actually an interesting perspective. I think you can also view this model as a special instance of an ensemble method where it's ensembled to different method in a single objective. So yeah, I think that's, a, um, that's, a, that's definitely a different perspective than the perspective that I came with. But uh, um, yeah, I, I guess in that case, we can even consider, for example, like I presented in the extension, we have like different type of a co-occurrence pattern. You can also incorporate that as like a separate model in your ensemble. Yeah, you could add more. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, the other question is, you compare your method to weighted uh, MF, mm -hmm. uh, but you're using ranking metrics to evaluate. And I was wondering, um, have you tried to see on the same data sets if you use uh, BPR or uh, any other ranking-based uh, model, oh. how it would perform? And so, I mean, on, the, on some of those data sets, I tried BPR. I couldn't make it to work as well as with the matrix factorization as well cofactor. But you know, like, BPR is trained with SGD, which is probably harder to make hyperparameter work. I, I tried my best, but maybe I'm not, just not there yet. So I, I tried mm -hmm. BPR. It's just not working as good as well. Any more questions? Excuse me, can I ask a question? Yes, where are you? I'm where right you? here. Where? Oh, stand up, please. Stand up. <laughs> so uh, actually, I'm assuming that in your matrix factorization, you are using these clicks on on items in your matrix, right? Yes. Then now question is, combining these two, aren't you representing the same thing? I'm not sure if doing both on matrix factorization on the clicks and word to work model on the clicks are representing two different things or you are adding more information. That's exactly the question we're trying to answer in this paper because like you said, we are basically using the same type of data twice. And uh, the, the results we find is actually very interesting. Even, even though we use the same data twice, we actually get a perf performance boost as compared to just use the data once in the regular matrix factorization. So which is why I'm thinking part of the reason might be because the matrix factorization model is actually a very limited linear model. So even though this co-occurrence co information in principle is hidden in the data. Yeah, but uh, the question that I have is that did you ever compare the result of this combined model with just work to work model? Uh, yes, that's actually will be the last part. The, the, yes, we did compare with, uh, we learned like item embedding from work to work. But in order to make an evaluation in the recommender system case, you still need to train some user factor, right? So we basically keep the item factor learned from work to work fix. And then we do a matrix factorization, and it does not do as well as any of these other models. And my last question is that uh, in your implementation for word to wake did you use negative sampling on popular items? Uh, you mean the word to wake that I run I mean, separately or I mean in this the proposed model?
uh, I mean, were to work in your combined model, right? So um, we actually get away with doing those negative sampling in our proposed cofactor model by making use of the fact that word vec is really just factorizing a co-occurrence matrix. So yeah. we actually formulated our problem in a matrix factorization fashion. So we didn't actually do SGD. We actually do alternating least square. And still, it was working better on, on popular items, right? OK, uh, we're going to take this sure. discussion offline uh, because we run out of time for the questions. Okay. And I know there are more, there's more questions in the audience, so you know where to find him and ask him all the questions. Thanks again. Okay, thank you.